misunderstanding about what it is that I'm trying to accomplish, what it is that, that you folks are trying to accomplish, and I believe it would be valuable. Yeah, I understand that, but also these students are angry, and their anger is valid, and I would, here's my email, I will organize with them and schedule, so let me know when you're free to have that discussion, and we will figure something out with the students. Fair enough. It's a lot. It's locked. It's locked. Just is she in there? Locked. She's in there. I saw her go in there. You don't need to do that. You're black. Let the white people do that. You can tell white people. Can you tell him while we're concerned? White people. White people speak. White people speak. Yo, white people to the front. I think it's important that all administration are in the same place so that they can no longer lie and hold themselves all accountable at the same place at the same time with all these cameras. So I would like Stacey Brown. Damn right. Yep. Yep. On uniform. Yes. On uniform. Yeah. On uniform right now. Without the taser, she don't need none of that. We're not going to hit her or nothing. We're people that hey, have students We have that no they... guns up in this place because supposedly this is a weapon free zone. So if you're going to invite your cops, please yeah. let them leave their weapons here because where do we have a weapon on us? Exactly. Where? We don't have pocket knives. We don't have guns. We don't have anything. So Y'all do it on bias. Y'all expect them, us to have to weapons. Here. Here. Well, listen, I can't promise you I'm going to get her. No, we can't. Okay. Oh, we'll try. Can everybody dial Evergreen's number and make calls to the campus police office to get yeah, Stacey Brown? Yeah. 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 Some people stay recording, though. We all recording. We recording. Look at her. Look where you going. Where you going, sis? Wendy. Wendy. Okay, so Wendy. Wendy. Community. Evergreen police. Uh, yeah, is Stacy Brown there? Uh, the chief of police is in a meeting. Can I help you? Yeah, she needs to come to the li to the library right now. For what? Uh, she just needs to be here. For what? She needs to come to the library. For what reason? What's going on? Hi, can you bring bring Stacy Brown into the library? For what reason would I would I would my do you need my chief to come to the library? No. Stacy Brown, come to the library. What for what reason does the chief need to come to the library? Um, there is a meeting of students with the administration in the library right now. We have not heard of any meeting with the administration. No one has contacted well, us. Well, there is one right now, and I am informing you about that meeting. Okay, well, when the administration calls us <laughs> and asks us to come to the meeting, we'll go to that meeting. Okay, we called Stacy Brown, right? That's the Roach's name? Okay. Uh, <laughs> she refuses to come, hung up on us, so 
let's do what we need to with that information. So what if we had a real emergency and they just won't help us? Like, right. yeah. what? Yeah. what about, do we have to be white for you to help? How are we supposed to be safe here on campus if we can't even get help from like people who are supposed to protect us? That but sounds no, like another they lawsuit. They fear from us. They right. fear of us trying to take, mace us in the eyes and shit. For what? For us saying like, hey, Brett, you need to apologize? Because For what fucking white guy? Is there any black folks that need water in here? Community, community love! Community love! This is a public uh, institution, so our parents and our grandparents and our community members, they're paying taxes right now. And when our parents are calling, addressing issues, saying there are racist situations or confrontations going on on campus, and you guys are deliberately saying this is not happening right now, when you have a good 200 people standing in a room, you're still telling parents and community that this is not happening. So I don't understand that you need to do something at this moment so that our our parents can get through to understand to you. Community love! Community love! Community love! Community love. We have a room. Do you want to stay here or do you want to go to the room 4300 upstairs? Big go to that room. room. Go to that room. White people in front and in back. She said, White people protect students of color. Specific concerns and we talk about specific solutions. And I know you're angry, I know you're frustrated, I know you're pissed off. And I'll tell you right now, we can't change the institution without your help, and this is help. Do you care about our safety? Do you? Very much. Hmm. Okay, so why are the police trying to, like, fucking mace us and shit for us telling Brent that he needs to apologize? change the outcomes of that proceeding. And the Attorney General of the State of Washington said no. Yeah, and the issue is that you're letting other people do it. Put your hand down. That's my problem, George. You keep doing these little hand movements or whatever. Like, Come through. <laughs> this is another show. Yeah. And I'm going to decolonize the space. I'll just be roaming around. <laughs> <laughs> I sit with the deans every Tuesday for deans meeting. When there is a discussion about something that's happening within a program, their focus is students and staff. It is. I mean, you may not believe it, but that's, that's the main thing. Okay. okay. No, are we talking about white students or colored students? We're talking about all students. This is also... You're oppressing students that are trained to be here. So how are faculty more important to students? And we're not talking about white students right now. We're talking about students of color and how you're going to help accommodate to us. We're not talking about all students neither. We're talking about specifically students of color. Right. Because you, you, and I believe you, you guys have a big demographic of being a predominantly white school. And there's no doubt that you guys do make things accessible and good for white students. But that's the issue is you're leaving out too many of us that deserve, deserve it too. Yeah. Yeah. Institutional change is slow here. Oh! oh. violation of the contract, we can have discussion, we can talk, but there are no requirements. Well, you know, I think there is a lot of issues with violation of the contract, but I don't know about y'all, but a lot of my emails get ignored, so how can you say you're hearing my story and knowing what's being violated if you won't even listen? But my question is, why do we have faculty that work here that make our students feel uncomfortable and unsafe? Yeah. Yeah. It's a simple question. Y'all here for us. Oh, he, that just clicked with him. He was just like, to do homework when I'm stressed and it's like, oh, like racism and anti-blackness and classroom mm -hmm. and shit. So like, how is that prioritizing my education when I have like literal panic attacks sometimes, like because of this institution? How are you prioritizing me? Um, I think we've had a concerted effort this year. To try and get no, no, this is not a PR conference. This is not a PR conference. Right, if there's been an effort, we wouldn't be here right now. My so let's be real. This effort's going to keep going on for years. What effort? No, 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 you can't make change. Don't let me walk out. Where's the effort? I'm telling you right now. Don't talk over me. I'm telling you right now that nothing you have done.
done has made change. None of your efforts have worked. We're here together because none of your efforts have worked. This is the first time a lot of times when people get to college where they have to have those conversations and maybe they've never even verbalized these things before. And so it can get really tricky and we completely understand that. And we also understand that people um, are all speaking from their own truth. So when you hear from students, when you hear from your peers, what they're saying about their experience is true for them and that should never be discounted. So I hold a lot of different kinds of privilege. Um, the two that are probably the most operative in my teaching are the fact that I'm white and I'm cisgender. I am cisgender, black, female, and straight. I am a cisgender, straight woman. Um, I am an immigrant, and getting a green card for me is something that has given me a lot of, a lot of privilege. I am a cisgendered woman who is white and queer and a first person in my family to go to college, and I grew up working class, and I am not disabled, and I'm fat. And those are all identities that are important to me. I have a skin color that's different than, um, than sort of a lot of people who have power, but I'm a male, I'm straight, I'm cis, uh, highly educated. My particular education is in math and physics, which gives me a lot of sort of space to be kind of the, oh, well, the scientist doesn't have to worry about social justice, right? Mm -hmm. Science is about the truth. The list of identities uh, for which you might have privilege, I can check off all of them, aside from being a woman. When I walk into the room, I don't know whether it's male privilege, white privilege, uh, over-educated privilege, um, you know, it's down the whole list, ableism, age. I can be helpful for white, cisgender, heteronormative men who are trying to figure out what to do uh, holding lots of cards of privilege about how to move forward in a meaningful, respectful way with respect to social justice. I don't know if I said my pronouns and I don't remember and that's my cisgendered privilege showing so I use she and her pronouns. I hear from fellow white people the sentiment you know, but we're all human, right? We're all, we're all people. And a mentor of mine, Norma Alicia Pino, who used to work here, would often talk about truth versus reality. And the fact that it is true that all of us are human. Some of us may also identify as unicorns, but all of us are human. <laughs> and that the reality is that some humans are treated differently because of systems of oppression. So um, I want you to work with um, the person next to you and, and talk about what is the truth in that statement? That happened a long time ago, right? Maybe if you want to add it there, that happened a long time ago, you should get over it, right? So, but let's work with that. That happened a long time ago. What is the truth in that? And then what is the reality of this statement? Um, the reality is that our country was founded on the basis of slavery, and there are still so many ingrained social, economic, basically every shared institution that our society has is still so based in racism. Uh, so even if you personally don't have a racist sentiment, that doesn't mean you're not contributing to a racist society. Damn. <laughs> Which is great. I love working here. <laughs> and we are encouraging white staff, faculty, and students to go off campus um, in order to make the space at Evergreen more um, centered around people of color. I believe that we all have values of social justice. I also believe that we don't all have the skills to deal with that. And in particular, when I think about white men, I think about uh, that we are actually trained to not have those skills. So it's such a unique opportunity to come together and spend a couple days and really look more in depth both at the issues of equity, um, uh, but also to start developing some of those skills that are, we're going to carry with us so we can live our lives consistent with our values of social justice. What consequences do faculty members face for making students feel unsafe. What, what consequences? Because when we make y'all feel unsafe, we get the police and the state troopers and the city police calling us.
It's a process of changing faculty's culture. I'm asking, what are you doing? What are we doing what right now? What are you going to put on these faculty right now? On the faculty currently, we're trying to develop a teaching and learning center to give them professional development. So no consequences like the, are sent to you. You're going to build a center. So they can fire? No, they can fire. What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, for saying the N-word in class, referring to women as whores, they don't get any consequences but a little uh, workshop? What do you mean? Right, and are, isn't our money paying for that workshop? You don't care about yeah. Our no. It's all over. No. <laughs> no. <laughs>